So, and I've said this like 8,000 times now because I've been on a press tour for the past month, but we would all go and watch the movies and then we would all come back to someone's house and eat cheese pizza until somebody barfed. Yes, you did. Exactly, that's right. I have to ask, who's your favorite Ninja Turtle? Michelangelo. Yeah. Okay. According to, so Michelangelo is my favorite because he was my favorite when I was a kid and According to Megan Fox, I am most like Leonardo, right? And I actually took the turtle quiz and I got Leonardo. I would like Donatello to be my best friend if I had a choice. And sometimes when I'm around my daughter, I become Raphael. Wow. So this is very Thank much you. a part of your life. Thank you. That, by the way, they're, they're, you know what they said all for? Violence. <laughs> <laughs> so let's talk going forward, he made this decision to, to not kill, period, forever. And that decision uh, put him in a tricky place a bunch of different times. So I think that if everything was always black and white with him, that there are certainly gonna be shades of gray this year. Okay. Which is more interesting. Yes, definitely. Um, do we have, we have two microphones in the house. <laughs> no. <laughs> No, here's, and this is actually true. Typically, by now, I would have gone to the writer's room and we would have had long, lengthy discussions about the upcoming season. But I wrapped Arrow. I had a really nice uh, end of season dinner with Greg Berlanti, which is what I always do. We chat about the good, the bad, the ugly, the what's coming, what's happened, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but we had that and then I've, I literally haven't been home since the beginning of May on the Turtles press tour. So I have um, a meeting with the writing team on Wednesday. And even if I had had it this past Wednesday, I actually still couldn't tell you anything, but uh, I'm gonna get the full download next week. Thank you. Thank you. I'm excited for the Russia stuff. Yeah, that'll be awesome. Is there anything you can tell us about maybe no. what kind of characters, heroes or villains from the comics or anything that maybe we're gonna be able to see? Uh, we are introducing a another vigilante from the DC universe next season, and we are our villain is going to, uh, in a lot of ways, be a callback to season one, and uh, that's something that you can do when you're in season five, um, and I, and I think that that the villain that we have coming in is really going to ground the show and take us back to some of the elements that we had uh, in the earlier days before we introduced so many fantastical elements um, to the Arrowverse, as it were. Got it. Point of, from a personal standpoint, um, Katie Cassidy is a really good friend of mine, and she was, you know, she was here last year, and we got to hang out in Philadelphia, and, and she was the first cast member that I met when I went to Vancouver to shoot the pilot. And when you work with someone for that long and they're no longer on the show, it really feels in a certain way like, like they actually die a little bit. She, she didn't, she's alive. <laughs> uh, but uh, it was a tough call. It was a tough decision. Um, I'm not the one that made it and I'm not trying to throw the people who made it under the bus, but this is the nature of television sometimes. Shows go on, some characters make it, some characters don't. It sucked though. That scene was so raw. Everyone's emotions. What do you mean when I made the was... ugly cry face in the middle of the scene? <laughs> By the way, that's not scripted at all. I mean, th this has happened twice on the show where scenes where Oliver is not supposed to cry, I have cried because I'm actually sad in real life. <laughs> it happened with Susanna Thompson during her last scene where Oliver uh, finds out that, that this girl, who we don't know her name, Samantha, it turns out, has quote unquote lost the baby, right? That scene was scripted that Oliver was like, she lost the baby, woo! <laughs> And it came out, she lost the baby, and then I started crying because it was my, it was my last scene with Susanna Thompson. I was really sad, same thing happened with Katie. Um, I totally made an ugly cry face, and they definitely put it on TV. <laughs> <laughs> but 
That's all right. It made it all the better, I think. <laughs> Let's go over here to another question. <laughs> Um, what I'm very excited for, and what a big part of the Arrow canon is, is that, you know, Green Arrow, from its inception point, has always been a very political character. And I think that, you know, as a show, at the risk of offending some people, we should really discover what Oliver's political ideology is. We should really make Green Arrow someone that is an advocate for the people. Um, he was always a very, uh, liberal superhero, and it would be nice, regardless of his, um, his political ideology to lean into it a little bit, not be afraid to offend some people, and really see what he stands for. So I think as mayor, uh, I've always loved the idea of Oliver Queen as a public persona within Star City, but that's not really something that we've had to, um, been able to tackle. I mean, he was obviously running Queen Consolidated in season two, and it wasn't until the end of this season when you know he hopped on a car and gets to do a speech that you know, we really got to see him as a man of the people within Star City, so hope we get to see more of that. Giant Fortnite crossover. No, seriously. How we end up doing that? I don't know. <laughs> but um, I, I, this, is, this is really, um, this is kind of an unprecedented moment in, in terms of like the history of network television to have four shows, same showrunner. Um, obviously, Supergirl is in a little bit of a different universe, but we can fix that. <laughs> That's one line of dialogue and it's all fixed. <laughs> so I would suspect that Oliver will be meeting Supergirl at some point. Who do you think um, that that? I was also really lucky enough earlier this week to get an advanced screening to see Turtles, and so I... So you didn't pay for a ticket? I'm going back. That's how much I loved it. So you. let's, you know. <laughs> no, but I loved how, um, how kid-friendly it was, even yeah. with all of the action. So I was wondering, is that something, especially you know, having your little girl, is that something you're going to look more into? So things that are be more friendly for her to be able to see you well, in? Well, I mean, I, I always want her to be able to enjoy what I do for a living. And I think that that's true of any vocation, not just acting. Um, hopefully I get to a point in my career where I'm really able to curate and decide what I want to do. Right. Um, you know, I had to audition for Turtles just like I had to audition for Arrow. Um, I didn't set out to play two vigilantes in separate universes with no superpowers. That's just how it worked out. <laughs> but um, I would love to do stuff that, that, that she would really enjoy, whether that's voicing something in an animated movie or just doing a straight up kids movie or, you know, doing like a hard R sci-fi film where I murder a bunch of people. As long as she can enjoy it yes. and know that it's make-believe, I'm good with that. I just want to say on Leon, you in real life. Dead in a week. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was my question, so yeah. I'm not a good camper. Not a good camper. Um, I only like camping, this is an old joke from The Tonight Show, but I only like camping if it's catered. And there's a mattress and a pillow. So glamping. Is it more your style? Yeah, is that a word? Yes, glamping. Okay. Well, I don't want to do that either. I like staying in hotels. No, if I got stranded on Lee and you, I'd be dead in a week, probably. So you wouldn't, so you wouldn't be making any arrows or anything? No, I mean, maybe a month. Maybe a month, but definitely not longer than that. I'm not, a, I'm not a skilled, I'm an actor for God's sake. Thank you very much. <laughs> Important with the amount of time that we spend together, which is way too much. Like, I've spent way too much time with David Ramsey. Way too much. We have stupid inside jokes and we make each other laugh and I really think that um, it is important even when there is a lot of drama on a show to eventually have a, a wink and a nod, not directly to camera, but you know, it is a television show and it's important to have fun and I think that good comedy springs from good interpersonal relationships and good writing, but, but mostly the former. Thank you. Thank you. Have a great day. Thank you, you too. Thank you.
What Who pulls the most pranks on set? What a like, just, there's nothing in particular, like, there's no, like, prank, like, you know, all of a sudden my, my, I show up one day, my pants are eight sizes too big or something like that. Um, but we always have, we always have fun with one another, and again, inside jokes spring up, and I love John, so John and I just have a good time. Awesome. Okay. Everyone loves John. Everyone does love John. <laughs> Question over here. Hi, I'm an actress. So <laughs> Meaning murder? <laughs> Probably. <laughs> um, I don't really have a. I don't really have a city. I mean, I grew up in Toronto, and um, <laughs> thanks. <laughs> Uh, I grew up in Toronto, but now Los Angeles feels like home. I definitely wouldn't go to the lengths that Oliver would go to, but I, I'd go almost all the way there. I love LA. I love LA. It gets a bad rap sometimes. Thank you. Okay, question over here. Within the Arrow show? Yes. Um, I would say either Malcolm Merlin or Slade Wilson. Uh, I love villains. Villains are my jam. Anytime I was like, what other superhero do you want to play? I'm like, I'm good with two. Uh, I'd like to play the Riddler. Because I love villains, right? So just find me a villain within the Arrowverse. And uh, that would have been my choice after Oliver. Thank you. We're, we're full up on jokers, I think. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Good question over here. Uh, John Diggle is named after Andy Diggle, which was, uh, was a contributing writer on Green Arrow Year One, um, or possibly a contributing artist. Oh my God, I should know this. Writer, thank you. <laughs> go with your instincts. Um, so, that, so that's where the name Diggle came from, and I laugh when I say it all the time. Diggle, diggle, diggle. <laughs> thank you. Okay, over here. And I wouldn't say that I'm the most skilled at karate, but in terms of a martial art, I really think that the art of uh, fighting on screen and fighting in, in front of the camera is something that you have to learn because depending on where the camera is, that's how you, you know, you might throw a fake punch where you have to circle out really wide and come, or you have to go really deep by the face. So I've become relatively skilled at at knowing, based on the position of the camera, how to do a convincing fight on screen where you're not actually punching someone in the face. How many accidents have happened on set? Um, Stunt? No, no accidents. I mean, we, we've, had, uh, we've had a guy take a pretty nasty spill on a bike. Um, I banged my leg pretty hard during a training sequence in, in season one. And... Um, I dropped Katie Cassidy on the ground once. <laughs> it's in the blooper reel for season one. Uh, but but no, we we've been we've been very fortunate not to have um, any big time accidents. Cast on the show to to right now. I mean, when I was cast, I was uh, dating someone who is now my wife, and I didn't have any kids, and now I have a two and a half year old. So uh, thank it's been done before, but thank you. Um, so, uh, you know, obviously I've changed and, you know, I, I used to define success within acting as the number of days that I could work in a year. Because when you're an actor that doesn't have a job, that's a lot of sitting around, it's a lot of auditioning. So actually getting a job and, and working, it, you know, that was how I defined success and I, th I think it was actually a relatively good model. Now, uh, you know, it, it, it's rare that I have a day off. Like, I've been on this press tour for Turtles coming immediately off of season four, which came immediately off of filming Turtles, which came immediately off of season three. So, as of Monday, for about four weeks, you are not going to see me, hear from me. There will be no tweets, no snaps, no full books, nothing. Um, so, uh, I've obviously grown, but that, you know, I've, I've grown because since I've been cast as Oliver Queen, I've got to do, between all the crossovers, probably close to 100 episodes of television and a, and a, big, and a big feature film. 
So uh, I've gotten a lot of reps since then, and that has definitely helped me grow. Thank you. Thank you. Who would you choose to play him? Um, it's like, <laughs> if you couldn't go to dinner with your wife, what hot guy would you want to go to dinner with your wife? John Barrowman. <laughs> Can you answer that question too? <laughs> playing Green Arrow, who do you think would be good to play Green Arrow? Jared Padalecki! Jared Padalecki. As long as I got to be in the Supernatural movie playing his role, that's fine. And, uh, as, and, and as, for, as for dinner with my wife, I'm going to choose John Barrowman for reasons that should be obvious. That's Again, awesome. as long as I got to then go out with Scott. <laughs> Scott's his husband. That's gonna be all over Twitter. It should be. <laughs> Scott's handsome. Thank you. Thanks, Max. Thanks. Okay. Super uncomfortable. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go over here. Hey, how you doing? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I, I know that, uh, I know that um, it was important uh, I, I, I thought especially at the end of season four with everything that happened and obviously with uh, with Laura Lance's death that their relationship be put on the on the back burner because I think that there were more pressing issues obviously um, so I don't know what they're gonna what, what's gonna happen in season five I do know that um, they don't I don't believe that they begin season five together so we'll see where it goes from there Thank you. Thank Love you. you. Thank you. Do you think her decision to walk away, do you think that that was justified? Or do you think maybe there was something else, maybe some couples counseling she su sort of suggested first? Or... Well, that would have been a fun scene. <laughs> Oliver, you're in the trust tree. Talk about your feelings. Um, no, I, I, I felt like she was relatively quick to walk away, but I'm not going to, I mean, Fictional character. She's allowed to do whatever she wants. Got it. Okay. Let's go over here. I see. That's some of the best, like, combat that you'll ever see. So, um, you know, if they make three, four more born movies, I'm, I'm, I'm totally ready for that. Totally ready. I love the Jason Bourne franchise. Fantastic. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, over here. How you doing? You're so successful. Uh, I want to know the dark side. What was the most crushing role that you maybe thought you had before you became Spartacus. famous with Arrow? And what was it? Spartacus. Oh. And was there any uh, there anything you could have felt like you could have done different to get that role? Thank you. Well, um, when they decided to when they decided to uh, recast the role of Spartacus because Andy got sick and then ultimately ultimately passed away. Um, you know, that was a very early point in my career. I'd only had one or two American jobs, and um, I wish I would have been better during that screen test. I mean, I flew all the way to New Zealand. I got dressed up in the full Spartacus gear, which is ridiculous, by the way. <laughs> that, there's a picture floating around somewhere. Um, I wish I would have been better. Wish I would have had more command of the room. Wish I would have... Uh, reached out and and grabbed that one. Uh, obviously, Liam got the part, did a fantastic job, and I think that the decision to continue that show and to keep a whole network of cast and crew employed was was a wise one. Um, but, uh, but that I came back from New Zealand thinking that I was going to play Spartacus and uh, didn't get it. Thank you. Thank you. I, I wasn't. I wasn't offered it. It was something that I had to pursue. They wanted me to go on tape. I had I had, had a bunch of meetings with the director and the producers of Platinum Dunes, and um, I refused to go on tape first because I had another movie offer uh, that I had accepted because it came in before uh, TMNT, 
And second, because I was convinced that it wasn't actually going to fit into my schedule because my hiatus is such a short window uh, for Arrow. When we found out that it was going to work, I went on tape, did a chemistry read with Megan Fox, and then that Monday I got the call, having already signed a, a deal memo, being like, okay, we're going to do it, and I was fired up. I was really, really fired up. And then I had to go shoot the scene where Katrina Law and I get married. <laughs> look all sad, but um, yeah, that was a pretty cool call to get. Yeah, I, when I found out that you were playing Casey Jones, he's my favorite in the whole Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles ever. Like, Have you seen the movie? I, I haven't seen the movie yet. Why? Only because I've been here. I've been here. I haven't gone, but I plan to go on Monday or Tuesday when I get home, I promise. Thank you very I much. I, hope, I really hope you enjoy Casey Jones. I oh, have a I will, because you're line. playing him, so. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Okay, over here. Hi, my name is Lizzie. Um, for my Happy birthday, birthday, we're here. Uh, I'm, I was, I met you when we were snowed in at New Jersey. Aww. Uh, my question is, what was your favorite part of playing Casey Jones? Just being able to have some fun. You know what I mean? I cracked more smiles in the first 20 minutes of, of TMNT than I did in four seasons on Arrow. <laughs> just, you know, I love both characters, but playing Oliver can be a bit of a drag sometimes because he's a sourpuss at best. So, <laughs> so playing Casey and filming in New York City and doing stuff like thinking the turtles are aliens and that they're gonna eat me, that was a lot of fun. Plus I got to whip pint glasses at bottles of booze. Never do that. <laughs> but that was fun too. So I think, the, I think the best part about playing Casey Jones was just what an earnest, enthusiastic guy he is and how um, uplifting that was to play. Thank you. Thank you, nice to see you again. Thank you. Slightly inferior Marvel version of my character, but anyway. <laughs> he has a dog. Hawkeye's a good guy. And Jeremy's a good guy. We, we, have, uh, we have some mutual friends. Uh, my question By the way, is... I just also met Chris Evans for the first time. <laughs> Disarmingly handsome. <laughs> like he was looking at me, but I felt like he was looking through me. <laughs> My question is actually related to the project that you have um, going on with your cousin Robbie. Yeah. 1.7 million. And that, um, so that was good. And uh, I'm, I'm very excited because, you know, when you, when you work on a project like Arrow or you work on a project like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, it, it really is like literally hundreds of people that are creating something and there's a lot of cooks in the kitchen, and that's one way to make things. And I think a nice counterpoint to that, because I, I would obviously never speak ill of the studio system. If you're watching out there, Paramount executives, the Warner Brothers executives, Let it be known. I love you and thank you very much for all the opportunity. But every once in a while, you also have to do something that's very personal. Because I think that creating a personal project uh, has the ability to have a universal appeal because it really feels like someone's blood, sweat, and tears went into it. I feel like that's one of the reasons why a movie like Deadpool was so successful because that's a movie that Ryan Reynolds tried to get made for 10 years. They finally were like, yeah, fine, make it go away and do it yourself. <laughs> and they made an awesome movie because they didn't, they, they weren't catering to anyone. They were just making the Deadpool movie that they wanted to make. So with Code 8, we are gonna make the sci-fi, dystopian, futuristic film that we wanna make. And hopefully it's good. So are we gonna actually see you in the movie? Oh, I'm gonna be in the movie for sure. Woohoo! Absolutely. Thank you. Fired up. Awesome, thank you. Over here. Hey Steven, Hi. I don't know if everybody knows what an engine
fine. Victor. I am. I am. You are I in a minute. So you mentioned John Barrowman, Victor Garber, Grant Gustin. Now Maris is part of the universe. So I'm going to stop you right there. We're not doing a musical episode of Aaron. <laughs> we're not. We're well, not. Well, okay. If we, you're not you know what? We will, but only if Oliver dies in Act One. <laughs> and everyone else can sing. Come on. You pick. You hit the high note in, in Music that's, of the Night. But true. at least you do so many so much for so many wonderful charities. Thank How you. about at least no, and it's wonderful and everything that you've tell you what I, I'll tell you what I would agree to. What would you agree to? I would agree to a venue in Los Angeles or New York or Philadelphia, because why not? Uh, where we literally do like a live musical arrow flash something performance. Okay. But we're not doing a musical episode. All the I'll money can it. go to charity. It'll be me and John and Victor and Grant. Uh, like, literally, I, the You've only problem is that I'm, I'm literally the worst singer of anyone on the show. No, you're we'll not. Get Col- we'll get Colton in. Oh, my God. Actually, this can- sounds like a reasonable idea. <laughs> so you get Neil McDonough to come play harmonica. And we'll get Neil He's playing insane. the harmonica just as a bass line. Neil, Neil will play the orchestra. It'll be fantastic. You got Jesse. There I mean, you go. Uh, look at the amount of the range. Okay, you s- you're selling me something that I've already bought. Yeah. Okay. You got it? Somebody started here. We got it. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, let's go over here. Um, I would like to take batting practice again, and I- I'm not gonna be totally satisfied until I have a singles match at some point in the WWE. It doesn't have to be. By the way, it doesn't have to be at WrestleMania. We can do like a local show at 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 whatever the what's the local arena here called? It's not the Spectrum anymore. I'm not calling it that. Um, <laughs> the Wells Fargo Arena. Um, also, it's the Sky Dome. Let's be clear. Um, yeah, I, I need to have a singles match in the WWE at some point. Thank you. I think Sheamus I, would be a good one. There you go. What a terrifying man. The challenge is out there now. Yeah. <laughs> I think we have time for just a- I mean, it seems weird that I've spent so much time with Jared and Jensen now, and we've never actually done something together. So I'm all for things that people enjoy. And, and one of the reasons that we do crossovers with, uh, you know, Flash and Legends and, and, and probably eventually Supergirl is because Greg Berlanti always says, you know, when my favorite characters from one show would show up on one of my other favorite shows, like that was something that excited me. So I don't know how it would go. I've seen the fan fiction, like I have a full <laughs> Arrow Supernatural crossover. It's, I need to find it's legit. It's, yeah, it's, Sometimes those go to some crazy areas. Yeah, yeah. Most fan fiction involves me and Diggle doing stuff that I can't talk right. about. Right. But, um, there's, there's some of like you cool and Jensen story. too. I, I don't. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> but uh, no, that that'd be really fun. I don't know how it would go though. Thank you. Thank you. All right. All right. Last question. Hey man, I run a winery where we literally make our own coffee, so that's a decent replacement. And then, you know, S- Starbucks, it's eventually gonna come out that there's an addictive property there, coffee, that they're not telling anyone about. I, I, enjoy, uh, I enjoy Starbucks coffee. Uh, okay. So it's close to Tim Hortons, but not good. <laughs> Tim Hortons. Not Tim Hortons. Coffee. <laughs> I know that that's like an anti-Canadian thing to say, but Tim Hortons coffee. Uh, one, one more, we can do one more, we can do that. Hey man, Arrow, is that He's not one of the bigger properties and, and, and characters within the DC Universe, but there are people who Green Arrow is their favorite. So to, to do a show and to be a custodian for that character, uh, you know, for a time, is, is really one of the best parts of playing him. Um, let's see my fellow Arrow there. Um, but, uh, you know, for me it was always Superman growing up. You know, like the Christopher Reeves movies, um, they hit me right at the right time, so it's always been Superman. That's awesome, man. And, and we'll end with, uh, with the arrow. Awesome. <laughs> My first ever uh, Comic-Con. I'm glad to be here. Um, Steven, you've been amazing with fans. You know, you show a lot of love to the fans, even the crazy ones that post on Facebook. Um, I just want to know, as a... Well, I, you know, I wouldn't say anything that's crazy. I think certain things that happen are weird but I think that weird is pretty awesome. So every once in a while at a con, uh, and this actually happened yesterday with, with, uh, with two girls, I signed something for them, and then they get that tattooed, right? 
they're right there. <laughs> and I'll, I'm always just like, because I don't have a tat any tattoos, so I'm always like, wow. <laughs> so it's really cool, but you know what? Um, whether someone is a, and, and, and actually, if I could end on this, this, this would be great, is, is you know, I was talking um, the other day, you know, I was on, I was uh, being interviewed by Larry King, and, you know, it got spun a little bit that it got, essentially what I said is that there are a lot of passionate Arrow fans, and I think that a passionate fandom is great, and whether that passion leads to positivity or negativity, that's perfectly fine. If you love the show, tremendous. If you hate the show, tremendous. As long as you're not indifferent, I'm totally fine. Um, and I appreciate reasonable criticism or even unreasonable criticism because someone is taking the time. But every once in a while, if that bleeds into someone uh, who's upset about the direction of a show and attacks a fictional character and then the real person who plays them, that to me means that you're not a real fan. That to me, I mean, if, if you can't separate the person playing a role from the fictional character, unless the real person is a dick and then you can do whatever you want. <laughs> but, but, but to me, that's a, that's a weird aspect of fandom that I, that I don't totally understand. And I'm not, doesn't you know, mean anything to me one way or another if someone who's gonna attack a real person, a friend of mine, if they're a fan of the show or not a fan of the show, I'm, I'm indifferent to that. So I, I just think that, uh, you know, ultimately being a fan and being passionate is incredibly important. But you know, gotta remember it's a TV show sometimes. You know what I'm saying? It was relatively long-winded, but whatever. Moral of the story, be kind. Be kind, yeah, have be a good kind. time. That's what be, fandom's about. Be good to one another. Right. Yeah, Perfect. speaking of which, Philadelphia, you guys treat me so great. Thank you everyone very much.